This time, let me tell you about a fascinating journey. We are right now in Dhaka, Bangladesh to take a look at their rapidly booming textile industry. But to truly understand this journey, let's turn back time to the year 1700. India was then the world's largest economy and Bengal province was the world leader in textiles with a 25% share in the global textile trade. Dhaka Muslin or Dhaka Malmal was one of the world's most popular products. Even Josephine Bonaparte, the wife of Napoleon, was a fan of Dhaka muslin. Moreover, Bengal province accounted for 50% of textiles and 80% of silks imported by the Dutch from Asia. So much was the dominance of Indian textiles that in the year 1719, London weavers came out on the streets as they were losing work due to Indian textiles and soon riots broke out. At that time, women wearing Indian textiles were harassed, clothes were torn and even acid was thrown. Thereafter, in 1721, cotton fabrics and dhaka muslin were banned in England. However, as the history would unfold, after the Battle of Plassey, the East India Company began ruling India and due to famines, growing taxation and force measures by the British, the once flourishing Bengal textile industry almost vanished. Much later, India was partitioned and Bengal was divided into India's West Bengal and East Pakistan, which eventually became Bangladesh in 1971. The next year, in 1972, Bangladesh textile mills were nationalized, but the newly formed entity soon started making losses and it was only by 1978 that a Bangladeshi private firm shipped country's first direct export order of 10,000 shirts to a Persian firm. This first direct export order opened the eyes of the government. Therefore, in 1982, new industrial policy was formed by returning the textile mills to their private owners. Moreover, in Bangladesh, duty-free import was allowed along with warehouse facilities and cash incentives. Furthermore, the low labor cost in Bangladesh and duty-free access to the EU and American markets aided in the increase of textile units across Bangladesh. But then came the year 2012. Rana Plaza building in Dhaka, which housed five garment factories, suddenly collapsed. 1100 workers sadly lost their lives. Many critics presumed this was the end of Bangladeshi textile exports. However, something unexpected happened. The tragedy led to an upgrade of structural, electrical and fire safety standards in many factories. IFC, in cooperation with Bangladesh government, established a $40 million credit facility to help factories upgrade and soon, with increased safety measures, European and US brands started directly sourcing from Bangladesh. Now, now, in 2022, Bangladesh has more than 4,500 garment factories that employ over 40 lakh people. Bangladesh is now the world's second largest ready-made garment exporter, contributing 81% of the country's export earnings and 20% of Bangladesh's GDP. In the end, it is impressive to witness the rise of Bangladesh textile industry and probably many things others can also learn from it. So finally, thanks for watching The Filmy Cut. I am Naveen and I will see you the next time.